Hi everyone, so I'm here to talk to you about how Heroes Down B spell list works in Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. Uh, I did a lot of uh, research this weekend, a lot of coding, to try and figure out how this thing works, and basically I managed to gather 20,000 samples of Heroes Down B and write out everything that uh, is on those lists. Um, and to trust me, I didn't actually press down B 20,000 times myself. I programmed a microcontroller to do this for me and a different script to actually read from my capture card what is on the spell list. I didn't, so that was what I spent my time doing, not actually pressing down B. I'll go more into later how I actually gathered the data using those methods, but first I just want to tell you what I learned. Um, so basically, uh, when the game tries to build a spell list, it has a couple things to do first. Uh, so the first thing it does is it makes a list of eligible spells. And the eligible spells cannot already be on the current spell list, so if it's trying to choose the second item in the list, Psych Up is not eligible. There are going to be four unique spells on your list every time. Um, the second thing is that if it's a spell in the same family as another spell, then it cannot be added to the list either. And what do I mean by the same family? Well, there are three families of spells in the game. There's the Bang family, there's the Sizz family, and there's the Thwack family. And only one of these pairs of spells can actually appear on the spell list. Um, you can get Bang and Sizz, for example. You can get one from two different families, but you can't get two of the same family on the spell list. Um, and then the third thing is not active from a prior cast. So for example, if you cast Bounce already and you pull up a spell list while Bounce is active, then the spell list will never contain Bounce. Same goes for Acceleratal, Hocus Pocus, Oomph, and Psych Up, as far as I can tell. Those are the only ones that seem to matter. Um, I haven't done as much research into whether or not there's a cooldown on the base spells, on the normal spells or not, but for sure these ones cannot come up while they're active. Um, and these are the weights, so you can see that uh, basically if the Bang family is chosen, then it chooses from these two spells with these probabilities, or if one of those spell families is chosen. Otherwise, uh, most spells have a weight around about four, four and a half. Um, the two rare spells are Hocus Pocus and Kamikaze, um, and also Magic Burst. Those are the three rare spells. Um, everything else is relatively the same weight um, uh, when, when you account for these kind of 50-50 probabilities on the spell families. These are also about weight three or four, or something around there. Um, so let's walk you through how the game chooses an example spell list. So let's say that Bounce has already been cast, for example. So Bounce is no longer eligible. Um, now when it chooses the first spell on the list, uh, right here, it's trying to choose this spell, um, it'll do a random sampling from, from all of the remaining spells. So Bounce is no longer active. Bounce just will not appear. Um, and it randomly chose Psych Up from this weight, and it had a uh, where's Psych Up? It had a 6.1% chance to choose Psych Up when that happened. Um, so that's fine. So it's going to add. So Bounce is gone. It's going to add Psych Up to the spell list. And now Psych Up is no longer eligible for the second slot. So when I go to add the second slot, Sizzle. Okay, so it's gonna. That means it chose the Sizz family. And. It's no longer eligible, and when it chose, sorry, when it chose the Sizz family, it had about a 14% chance to do that. And when it chose the Sizz family, it had either a 48% chance to choose Sizz or a 52% chance to choose Sizzle. And it chose Sizzle, so that is no longer eligible. And then it chose Oomph, and when it chose Oomph, it had a 7.8% chance to choose Oomph, and now Oomph is no longer eligible. And then it chose Acceleratal, and when it chose Acceleratal, it had a 7.9% chance to choose Acceleratal. And so that's how this spell list was generated while Bounce was active, for example. Um, that, that's how the probabilities would work. Um, so yeah, as it's going down the list, Bounce is not eligible, then Psych Up's not eligible, then Sizz Family is not eligible. 
then oomph is no longer eligible, and then finally it chooses Accelerator. Um, so that's kind of how the spell list works. So you can use this to your advantage, basically. If you cast Bounce or you cast Accelerator, for example, um, again, it's these five spells, uh, Bounce, Accelerator, and Hocus Pocus. So these five for sure will be removed from the from the eligible spell list if they are currently active, if they currently have an active status effect. Um, and then you're guaranteed four unique spells on the list, and if you choose from a spell family, then they come with these probabilities down here, basically. Um, so now I'd like to talk a little bit more about how I actually gathered all of this data. Um, and to do that, I have to show you uh, where am I at here. So here is my switch capture. This is just OBS open just so that I can actually have the capture on my desktop. Um, and then this is my um, this is my script that I used to capture the screen and do the, te the text reading. Um, but the the macro that I made to actually press down B repeatedly is based on a Teensy microcontroller, which I'm not sure if I actually showed. Let me show you guys that. So it's this it's this microcontroller right here, which uh, which I've used to simulate a controller and plug into my switch and run a custom script that just mashes down B over and over again. Um, so let me go back over here and I'll show you how that works. So basically, I I'm going to plug my Teensy into the front of my Switch via a normal USB cable. It will pair to the console and start mashing down B and shield. Okay, now it's plugged in. It's going to pair to the console. Is going to select hero on this screen. Let me see if I can show you uh, what this looks like, by the way. Uh, I don't seem to be able to, so that's fine. Um, but basically, I'm in training mode and I just disconnected all other controllers. I unpaired all other controllers from my Switch console and then I plug in the Teensy. Um, and that automatically, it runs a little uh, script and just loops over and over again to mash down B. It reaches that part where it doesn't actually press down B for a bit. That's the part of the script that syncs the controller to the console um, and selects hero on that choose fighters screen. And after that, it just starts mashing down B. So now comes this script. Um, and to to kind of explain this, basically, I'm using a uh, I'm using OpenCV to take a screenshot of this area of the screen right here, um, and then I'm using Tesseract, which is Google's uh, optical character recognition uh, OCR uh, open source library to actually read the text from the screenshot that I take. So again, I take a screenshot and then I try and read each line of text. And if each line of text is on the eligible spells list, or is on is on the real spells list, like I don't, I don't read out garbage, for example, um, then I output that list of spells. So uh, let's go ahead and run this script and I'll just show you kind of how it works. So I will run it on, yeah, I think 20 images will be fine. It'll give me some time to, it'll give me enough time to explain everything that's happening. So basically it's detecting when the screen goes bright for a second and then goes dark. And when, as soon as the screen goes dark, that means it will do a screen grabbing image, screen grabbing image, screen grabbing image. Um, and then it adds that to a queue of images to be worked on. And that's what the analyzing image number is talking about. Basically it's lagging a little bit behind because it takes a little while to, a little bit longer to read an image than it does to take a screenshot. But you see, as soon as it hit 20, the 0 through 19 equals, there are 20 images that I just uh, took a screenshot of, it catches up in short order and writes all of those to file. So what it does then is, actually, I'm going to go 
here and show you my display capture uh, so that you can see what I'm doing here. So I'm just opening my file folder and this has uh, my OCR list CSV in it. And this is the 20 spell list that I just took a screenshot of and it didn't fail on it didn't fail to read any of them. Um, I was able to run this, like I said, I grabbed 20,000 samples, I, I, which I did in two batches of 10,000. Um, and I was able to do each batch in about three and a half hours, so it took about seven hours and change to get 20,000 um, 20, samples of Hero's spell list. And I'm pretty proud of this, I think it ran pretty efficiently. Um, the other thing I did was I wrote a simulator that can also uh, approximate that algorithm I described at the beginning to uh, simulate as many uh, pulls of the spell list as I want. And this, of course, instead of running in three and a half hours, only runs in about one second. And that's what this sheet is. Basically, it's pulling um, using the weights that I gathered from those 20,000 pulls of real data, I can simulate. Uh, 20,000 pulls of fake data using the algorithm that I believe that the game uses. Um, so that's about it. I'm going to leave all of the source code in the description. Um, this is uh, where... Oh yeah, I forgot to mention failures. If the, if the script fails to read an image for whatever reason, then it does write that image to file. Um, this is from my second batch of 10,000. I only failed on seven images. Um, and they all have the word psych up in it, so... I think that's a uh, pretty good for seven out of ten thousand to have failed, and no more than that. Um, so yeah, I'll leave all of my source code in the description if you want to pour through it. It is a little bit involved, it is a little bit uh, tightly tailored to my precise setup that I have here, um, but you can read more about it there. Otherwise, I hope you've enjoyed the video, and uh, thank you so much for watching.